Hi everyone, welcome back to WG Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. Continuing the journey, now we are going to talk about something a little bit more advanced. In the end, all of this is very basic, but this is a little bit more advanced than just if and else. But I'm saying that you guys are doing a pretty good job. You know a lot of content, you know if statements, you know how to declare variables, you know like switch statements, you know how to get data from the keyboard. So if you put everything together, it's a lot of content that you already know. Now, what is that we are going to learn? Basically, we are going to learn uh, how to tell the computer to do something several times. Okay, so let's imagine that you would like the computer to count to 1 to 10. So how, how do you do that? How do you go and say, hey, computer, I would like you to keep doing this forever. I would like you to print the same number forever. Because right now, every time we execute, the computer starts executing and then it suddenly stops. But how can we actually tell, hey, I would like you to keep doing something for me. So while this is true, just keep doing. And this is what we are going to do. This is called loops. Basically, loops, you have different type of loops. Uh, in Java, you have while, do while, you have force, and a little bit uh, ones more specific that we're going to learn in the Java one for all. But uh, what are we going to, to do here? Uh, we're going to create a new package first. Um, don't remember the shortcut for creating a package. Alt insert package, and then just type loops. And then uh, let's create here a class, a Java class, and let's call while01. Because this is the topic that we are going to talk about, the while. PSVM, press tab, and we have our main method. At this point, at least, I hope you remember how to create the public stat void main. After 34 videos, this should be already in your mind. You should be dreaming with this guy. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to tell the computer, hey, I would like you to do something while... So, as you can see, there is a condition. That's why the conditionals, they came before this. So what's while? While is a instruction that we are going to tell the computer. As you can see, this is a, a keyword. It's a reserved word for Java. You can see that's blue. And basically, this is the syntax you have here. While, you open parentheses. Here, it comes the instruction. The same way as you did for if, the result of whatever you are doing here should be either true or false. If you add something that's not either true or false, you are going to get a compilation error. Your program will not be executed. It will not be compiled. So this is the block that we need. So basically, I'm telling you, hey, while you have this condition uh, evaluated to true, so for example, let's start very simple. While true, salt Let's imagine someone yelling at us. So what I'm saying here is, so while this is true, print this uh, message. So what's going to happen? This will be executed. Basically, the, the Java virtual machine will come this. Okay, so it looks like it's true. Let's just then print this message. And then when once it reaches line number seven, instead of finishing the program, what's going to do? It's going to go back. So from line seven, it's going to go back to line five and do the process all over again. Hey, while it's true, so this is going to keep going because true is not changing. So let's see what happens if I press Control Shift F10. So as you can see, the program will keep running forever. Why? Because the condition is not changing. So every time here, they are going back and keeping asking the same questions while true while true while true how do we stop you can either click here or press ctrl f2 okay William. so basically you are saying that i have to do a conditional here yeah we have to do a conditional you know how to do conditionals so let's say that we want them to count uh we want them to print like the message 10 times let's create here a counter could be uh, byte, for example, counter, and let's start this with zero. So you know that here it's like if and else statements. It needs to be something that's going to return either true or false. 
and we know the logical operators basically you have to use one of them here so while the counter is lower or equals 10 just print this message now how many times do you think this is going to print 10 or 11 times well let's see Ctrl shift f10 and this is going on forever why it's going on forever to understand how the while works the best thing you can do is put a breakpoint and then you press shift f9 and let's see what's happening you see counter is zero and then i'm going to uh it's asking hey is counter lower or uh, less than or equal to 10 yeah it's zero so zero is less than 10 then print the message and then i will press f8 again it went back and they asked the same question is counter less or equal than 10 yeah so it will keep asking these you can just keep pressing f8 forever and it will not get out of this because the condition is not changing so let's just stop again Control f2 and how can we actually change so basically we just have to change this variable inside the scope of the while basically i can come here and say okay so after you print the message counter that has the memory, the value starting memory, just be zero, will increase by one. So how can I achieve that? So basically this is what's happening. We have here, I'm um, just going to write it down. I will write it down outside of the classes so it will not confuse you. So we have counter. Counter is just a space in memory where we are allocating and we are having this number uh, referencing it. So this at the beginning at line five is being zero but i want to this to become like being incremented by one every time this while is going through it so i want the counter and the first iteration i want the counter to be the value of the counter plus one but here we have a very small problem that you are going to learn a little bit more once you you go into the Java one for all. That when you do this math, the result of this addition is an integer. So if you just hop over, it's saying, hey, you are providing integer, but the required type is byte. What's the problem here? The problem is like the same as float and double the value that you can store inside an integer is way bigger than the byte can accept. That's why Java is telling you, hey, you cannot do this. This probably will not finish very well for us. So what do we have to do here? We have two options. We can, one, change here to int, or you're going to learn how this works in the Java 1 for all. You can cast and you can force. You are saying, hey, whatever you are doing, uh, here we have to force uh, this one like this. We just need to say hey when you do this sum basically this is what's happening when you do this sum right here it doesn't matter how many bits you have because remember in the end it's just a, a matter of like uh, bits so when you say that you are and this is called cast so you are casting basically you are downsizing the value to the to byte so the result of this is an integer and the result that we are forcing is into byte. So basically you are telling Java, hey, I want, it doesn't matter if it only fits, let's say that it only fits like this here into the, the byte, but this is the result. What I'm telling Java, hey, I, I don't care what you do, just ignore whatever you have and just put whatever is left here. So the result can be unpredictable, but this this is something that the developer is doing Java is just assuming that you know that the result of this math will be something that can fit into byte but you are going to learn a little bit more about this so you can either live like this or to not get things more complicated because we are talking about while we can just move this to integer and then we just leave like this so let's leave it like this and let's go back so the first iteration counter is zero zero is less than 10 yes print this message and now i want the space in memory uh for counter to be the value that i have in the memory plus one so basically you're saying hey this space now will be what it will be the value that i had before plus one 
So in the end, once we pass this line, the value will be 1. And then we are going to the process again. 1 is less than 10. Yes. Now print this message and do this again. So now we are doing again. What is the value that we have here in memory? So for the counter, the value now is 1. So this 1 will come here. Plus 1. So the value memory is 2. So basically, this is something that you can always do to improve the way you think. Your brain should understand this by looking at it. You don't have to always debug, but if you can put this in a paper, it means that you completely understood what you are doing here. So try to explain to someone and you will really see if you are understanding this. And then the next one is going to do exactly the, the same thing. What it's going to do here? Hey, now I want the counter plus one. 2 plus 1, and so on. So it will keep all the way and checking until it's 10. So let's execute again, Control uh, shift f 10 And you are going to see here that we actually are getting 11 times. So you can add here, for example, counter plus, so you can see the number. Control shift f 10 So as you can see, the number is, is 0 and going all the way to 10. It means that we have 11 times. We fix this. We can say lower, uh, less than 10, not less or equal than 10. And then you have from 0 to 9, 10. Shift F9. Now we can debug and we are going to see the counter changing. So counter is 0. F8. Print the message. You see, counter is 0, then 1. 1 is uh, less than 10. Yes. So we keep going. Keep it 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 going. And then we have 9, okay, and then 9 is less than 10, yes. So execute this, and then do the math again. Counter will be 10. 10 is less than 10, no, it's equal than 10. So this is false. So if it's false, it's just going to finish the program. So press F9, and you can see in the console the messages. Okay, so basically that's the, the while, it's pretty straightforward. If you got the concept of conditionals pretty well, you should not have, uh, should not have any problems. Let's continue with more whiles in the next video. Bye-bye.